So I killed a lot of trees in my younger days following traditional advice, so I ain't got time. Darn it, I'm impatient. Hi, I'm Milton Chang of Bungsa Heirloom. A beautiful sunny spring day. So I walked by this uh, Trident Maple, my 25-year-old Trident Maple, which I planted in the ground for growing. Um, now it's a 26-year-old Trident Maple. Uh, I just couldn't help it, but wanted to show it to you to get an update. You can see how beautifully the new leaves come out. And right now it's growing about half an inch a day. Uh, in next week, it'll be growing one inch a day. Next week, it'll be growing two inches a day. The next week will be three inches a day. It'll, it'll be just full of leaves. One of the things you'll notice is that it has beautiful moss. I, I really do not like putting pebble on it to kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't look right. But um, what I did is I spread the moss powder as I show you in one of the videos. I grind up the moss, dry it out, grind up the moss and spread very sparingly, just a little bit. And in the winter time when it's wet and rainy, uh, I, I used the uh, 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 chicken pellet fertilizer, which the uh, moss just loves, the organic stuff. And so that's how it becomes uh, green like that, really in a couple of months. But the problem with that is that you have uh, these Irish moss hidden in the, in the moss. Just like this one, you have to pull it up, root and all, and uh, you can see, uh, if you don't, it will grow into a fairly quickly into a big round thing and then send out seeds and, and the whole, soon it will be covering the whole uh, bonsai pot. So you have to be quite vigilant getting rid of that. And then what I will do is that I will let these grow up and keep this side short, but let this side grow out to create a bigger triangle uh, as the tree matures. The top becomes very rounded and then the triangle. So that's what I'll do. So I thought I'd give you an update that you'd be interested to uh, follow me. I'll try to give you a one update a week uh, so that you can see uh, each tree, I don't mean this one, but so that you can over time uh, get a feel for how trees develop into something uh, presentable. Thank you very much uh, to look at this tree, but I will now go into the Q&A. The first question is about watering. It's like, uh, will my bonsai die if I don't water it every day. And I don't think it, it would die if you don't water it every day. Uh, that's because the root ball, if you have the right choices, not the really porous root ball uh, soil mix, uh, it will retain water for several days. But the one a day is a basically a safe measure because you can never over water it with a good drainage hole in the bottom. And uh, especially uh, with the soil mix that we use, uh, it retains the moisture quite well. But if you have to go on a trip, let's say ideally, let's say supposedly you're gonna go on a trip for a week and you don't have a neighbor who can come over water for you, which is what they do in Japan. Um, what you can do is that you can put it in a little basin of water, a uh, little bit above the uh, soil uh, bonsai uh, lower end, in the center bottom of the bonsai pot. So the tree will continue to have the uh, moisture to sip on and uh, uh, the water would not get rancid in a week, and the tree would, let's say, suck up all the water in three days, and it will remain moist for the next three, four days. It should be fine. So use your judgment. Uh, the main thing is to keep the, tr the tree moist. Never let the root ball dry out. That's not a hard thing to do. Thank you for the great video, thank you. Um, how do you keep trees alive for two or three weeks after collecting them without repotting. I'm really curious. Uh, well, because I seem to uh, take very little care about my trees I dug up because there's usually a root ball that goes with it. The root ball isn't gonna dry that quickly. And if, during, if it's uh, starting to get warm some spring days, I will cover it with compost or cover with a tarp or water it. So I keep the, the, the root ball moist so the trees don't die. Half the tree dug up have not survived. What are the key when you move from ground to a pot? Of course, that depending on your digging technique or how you dig or your soil condition. But the point is that if you dig up a tree with very little tap roots, then you're basically in trouble. You have to cut back the top a lot so that it doesn't, the roots can compensate for the root loss. 
to give enough uh, uh, branches that's remaining. So what I suggest, as I said in the past, is to dig around every few months uh, a, a different spot until you go all the way around uh, in, be, before you dig it up. And then you take a reciprocal saw if necessary to go in and cut the tab roots. You don't really have to dig it that far away because the bonsai part, the growing part, it really isn't gonna be much, broad, much bigger than an inch and a half diameter, uh, a foot and a half diameter. So that's how you dig it to encourage the growth of the fibrous roots. So when you dig the tree, it doesn't die on you. If I plant a tree in the ground and grow for five years, it'll be way taller and much more narrow. Do I cut back every year? Well, that's the idea. If you plant a deciduous tree, for example, it'll grow up really tall and very little branching. And say, so what you do is you, you say, my bonsai wants to be this high. Then you cut it off here. So this will be the apex as it grew. And then the bottom branches will come out. You let it grow. And in fact, you leave it alone so that the bottom branch will get thick uh, to make uh, to look the tree look more natural. The bottom branches are thicker. So that's what you do. But if you, are, uh, you have the time, then what you do is that you air layer pieces, uh, especially deciduous trees, and they root in, in a several weeks, really, uh, maybe a, a month or several, um, let's say three months, six months time frame. Then you can have reduce the trees over time. And when you do that, it, it starts to re induce the bottom growth. So you're not losing much, but I will cut back the tree oh, once or twice a year at most. So let the tree grow. And one thing good about doing that, like cutting it here and let it grow up, is that the tree will taper. So in fact, if you want to be ex extreme, you want a tree this tall, you cut it here and you cut it here and cut it here in a sense of that high then you have a very nice tapered tree. So all my trees are cut once or twice a year to get to this, because if you plant in the ground, let it go, it kind of goes away from you. You, you know, you can't handle it afterwards, can't train it anymore. Well, what are your thoughts when you get dead trees sometimes? I don't know what to think. Well, I throw them away, for one. Uh, I don't lament it because there's no point in crying over spilled milk. Um, try to think about what I did wrong to learn something from it. What I'm sharing is actually a uh, real experience. I killed a lot of trees in my younger days uh, following traditional advice. And as a side interest, the reason why I developed short, um, shortcut methods, there are actually two main reasons. One, uh, practical reasons I ain't got time. I was managing startup companies, really, really busy working 18 hours a day so on weekends or when I have time, I go relax at cutting the trees. So that's why I planted the trees in the ground to get thick and that's, uh, fortunately, that's the result I get. The second reason is that, you know, bonsai is a, a, a art, a patient art. It's for the people who are patient. Well, darn it, I'm impatient. I'm very impatient. So what do I do? Instead of pamper one tree to death patiently, I give a little time for 100 trees with, for the same amount of time. So very impatient, quickly go over each one, but the result is I have a lot of trees to work with. So, you know, everything in life, there's no perfect solution, you just gotta find a balance. The next one basically, thank you very much for the useful information. I learned a lot, but um, please tell me uh, to understand about shimpaku or juniper of chin and pruning, repotting, I guess, the the whole banana about juniper. Well, there are many, many different kinds of juniper, but shimpaku is very, not very different from California juniper or prostrata juniper for that matter. Uh, it grows in a very similar way. And, um, but other juniper can be very different, so you cannot generalize. Um, in terms of gin, it's just, when you cut off a branch, don't cut, cut it all the way to the bottom, leave something uh, in fact, with something green so that it's easy to peel. But uh, you can always uh, jink it. That, that means kill, make it into a dead branch in a later day. And when it gets, the branch is really big, you can always carve it. And in terms of pruning, um, I used to uh, prune it drastically to shape. Now I don't do that. I do the rough forming by really by poodling and so that 
the tree will continue to grow vigorously and fill out. And then, um, then, then I go in and fine tune it. So basically poodling is that for a uh, uh, juniper, you basically want a branch to come out and grow these pads. And what you do is you imagine a branch coming down, you want a pad to be like that. And the branches are down here. So what you do is you cut off, pinch off whatever that grew outside of this uh, profile and eventually all of the growth will cover this and then you go in and pinch off to spread them out, to stand them out, to make it more like what's in a bonsai book. And that's a really quick and easy and keeps the tree healthy and growing uh, technique. I don't know what else to tell you and repotting, repotting juniper is really easy uh, for me. I don't use a fancy akadama and all that stuff. I just use my regular potting soil. I just shake it loose, cut off all the excess so I put it back, 10 minutes, I'm done uh, for repotting. Uh, it's really easy. I, as I said, I developed a whole bunch of methods that really has proven to work, uh, that saves a lot of time. None of the, sorry, bullshit that uh, goes with the traditional methods. I have a video about germinating seeds for bonsai, and I have several Chinese junipers I'm trying to uh, germinate, uh, but they haven't come out yet, so what do I do? Well. Uh, juniper is really, 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 really easy to, uh, to do by cutting. You cut a juniper, you notice that little bumps, that's where the roots will come out. The roots are already there. So if you put a moist soil, keep it damp, the roots will come out in several weeks. I'll say maximum four weeks, six weeks, and you can pull it out in three months and you're ready for putting it in the ground. So I really wouldn't, I, I have never started uh, juniper with, and I don't know anybody else does, uh, that started a juniper uh, with seeds. Hey, by the way, you know, you know what is gin made of? You know, the drinking gin? That's juniper berry. So if you want to use, uh, make effective use of the, the berries or the seeds, you may want to make gin instead, instead of planting them through cuttings. You get a much bigger plant, a very healthy plant, and with some pre-shaping very quickly. So with that in mind, then that's all the question for this week. I thank you very much for, much for your participation and please critique me so I can improve over time. So with that in mind, then thank you. If you like my video, that's my reward. I appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, please send us your email address so we can notify you uh, for shipment probably before Thanksgiving. We'll probably start to take pre-order in June, July timeframe. I uh, thank you for watching. i see you next week.